so the final business structure that we're going to have a look at is the trust. Now trusts are a pretty unique kind of uh, structure and they go back hundreds of years. In fact, they go back to a time when only certain people could own property, right? So for instance, often women couldn't own property, etc. So there was this problem that if you wanted to look after um, someone, how, how could you do that? Someone who couldn't own property or who maybe who didn't have the capacity to be able to look after property. So we still have those problems today, like with our children and if their parents die and we want to leave them the property, you can't kind of leave it to a two-year-old. So how do you do it? How do, how do you get them to have property and get looked after uh, without totally relying on giving it to someone else? So equity, the courts of equity came up with this idea of a trust. And uh, this is still used today um, when we want to look after people who don't have capacity, when we want to look after them financially. It's also used for things like tax planning, etc. is one of the major other ways that trusts are used um, in a business setting. So why don't we hop into trusts and see exactly what they are. So a trust arises whenever someone called the trustee owns property for the benefit of someone else called a beneficiary, right? So what we've got is this trustee. They own the property, but the beneficial owner, so this is the legal owner, right? The beneficial owner is actually the beneficiary. So if you think about it in the traditional trust sense, um, imagine that unfortunately some parents are killed and it leaves two children, child one and child two. Well, what the parents might do in their will is put all their money, their house, etc., into a trust and that might be owned by a relative, just say the uh, uncle or the aunt. So the uncle or the aunt actually become the trustees and the children are the beneficiaries of the trust. Okay. Now notice the trust is not a separate legal entity. The, the property is owned by the trustee, right? By the trustees. The trust property can be a single asset or it can be a business, right? So if it's a business, it could be a company, right? That the shares are owned by the trustees. So this is where we start to get this mix of business structures. The person who sets up the trust is known as the set law. So back for our example, right? So the parents who died are the set law, okay? They've put the money in, making these this person, let's just go with one, let's just say the aunt is the trustee and the children are the beneficiaries. They're the, they're the key roles in a trust. So the other one, is the set law. They're the person who set up the trust. Okay, the trustee can be a company, the trustee may or may not be one of the beneficiaries, and the terms of the trust are most often set out in a trust deed. Now what's unusual about the legal ownership of the trustee is that the trust property isn't really owned for them. It's not owned beneficially for them. It's owned on behalf of the beneficiaries. Therefore, any of that property is not able uh, to be used to satisfy, say, a bankruptcy of the trustee. Currently, trusts are mainly used to distribute wealth or uh, handle tax effectively when you conduct a business. So how does that actually work? Well, what you can do is just say you have a uh, a business where one member of the family, say, earns uh, $200,000 a year and one member earns zero. So we've got two people. Now, if that's really a business, and we're not talking about a salary because there are different tax rules, but if there's a business that's set up like that, one of the problems is, right, that just say we pay, we, we pay less tax when we don't earn much. So ju let's just, for argument's sake, say we paid zero tax up to 50,000 and then 50% tax on anything over that. So if we had that, this person's paying zero tax and this person is paying a half of 150, they're paying $75,000. So if this is a family, 
the family at the end of the day has $125,000 to spend out of that 200. Okay. Now, if we could instead have a trust that ran the business, that made this 200,000, and then at the end of the year, the trust gave 100,000 to this person and 100,000 to this person, right? Person, this person who before was paying $75,000 tax, they're gonna pay $25,000 tax, right? Because they don't, they pay zero to 50 and then half of the second 50, so they pay 25. This person, same thing. They're now, they were paying zero, but they're now gonna pay $25,000 tax. But notice, notice, total, they're only now paying 50,000 tax, not 75. So the family together has $150,000 to spend. They've made $25,000. Well, they've paid $25,000 less tax, okay? So what they've been able to do is to use this structure in order to be able to save tax. Now, you've got to be very careful about how you do that. I'm not recommending. You'd obviously need advice because it's not that simple. But that's in essence how the trust is being used a lot uh, in the current business environment. So one of the main things that we need to recognise is that because the trustee owns this property for someone else, they have a fiduciary, a very special obligation to look after that property for the beneficiaries. They can't look after themselves. Okay, They've got to look after the beneficiaries with this property. They distribute the income from the trust property to the beneficiaries, so they're running it to pay the beneficiaries. Okay, hopefully that gives us an overarching view of uh, how we can work with other people in business, how we can get them to do stuff for us in terms of that agency relationship, and then the different structures that we can use to run a business, sole trader, partnership when we want to work together, company if we want to limit our liability and be able to raise capital, and then finally a trust uh, for those particular situations, mainly with family and when we want to look after other people who may not have the capacity to look after themselves. Okay, so hopefully that gives us a good insight into some of those issues that we have when we want to work with others in business.